Amen. For all of you, what God is doing this new year. Amen. A new year doesn't bring new things. Change does. <laughs> Let me say that again. A new year doesn't bring new things. Change does. And so we can say what we're going to do, what we're going to have. Uh, it's your action that's going to produce the changes that you desire. Hallelujah. And so I got to change my action. What am I doing differently now <laughs> that's going to bring a different result? Hallelujah. Come on, shout us a new day. Come on, shout, today is my day for my turning point. Amen. Heard the Holy Ghost say that. Can you just declare that? Today is my turning point. Amen. Glory to God. We've been teaching on kingdom advancement. Amen. Kingdom advancement. And uh, today we're going to touch on the mindset transformation of the mind. Coming kingdom minded. And so we understand, we can go to Matthew 4 and 17. Somebody say hallelujah. Come on, Matthew 4 and 17. Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus said, repent. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so, what he was saying was, the first we need to identify the word repent, what it is and what it's not. Hallelujah. The word repent means to be heartily sorry for the past thoughts or pattern of thoughts that you've been living. Amen. It means to be heartily sorry from the core of the heart. It means to think differently. It means to change the mind for the better. In other words, the evidence that I really am heartily sorry for the past thoughts that I've thought in the life that I live is the approach of the transformation of my heart. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. It is the approach and the pursuit of the transformation of my heart. The word heart in the Greek is the Greek word cardia, and it means the center and seat of the thought life. So change just doesn't happen. Come on, change just doesn't happen. Child, I got to make a change. That's why the cross pointed in two directions. You have a complete choice. You have a choice. God doesn't force us to do anything. The life that you want, you can live it. You can, the road that you Want, want to live that? You can live that. God will let you. Matter of fact, in Deuteronomy, he said, God said, I'm going to sit back and I'm going to just watch my own people, is what he said, children of Israel. He said, I'm going to sit back and watch them. He said, because there are people in whom is no faith, no faith, no trust, no dependency on God. And anything outside of God is dysfunction. And that's why Adam in the garden, when they ate the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, him and Eve, God had driven them out of the Garden of Eden. Eden means paradise. Paradise means heaven. Place in the earth, just like heaven, God gave them. But when they ate of that cursed, corrupt fruit, he kicked them out of the place called paradise. And they were kicked out and driven out to do and to function and to operate and to take care of themselves. God was their provision. God was their provider. God was their protector. God was their environment. They lived in the presence of God. Amen. But when they sinned, what happened? God kicked them out of the presence. And they went out to what? Till the ground. And so man lost everything that God had given him. He lost everything that God had provided for him. But Jesus, come on, shout Jesus, came to restore <laughs> everything. That was lost, and that was stolen. So I like the song from earlier. He has, he's broken the curse. He has broken the curse. Come on, say that. He has broken the curse off of my life. So, so as a born-again believer, there's no more curse on your life. Hallelujah. And that's why we're called to live by faith, to trust and depend on God in and for and through everything. And so anything outside of faith is missing the mark, falling short of God. And so the Bible says, 
Without faith, it is impossible. We're just summarizing to get to where we need to get to today for what we've been touching and teaching on and what God is saying to us. Somebody say hallelujah. Glory to God. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. So that's one of those Paul's moments and think about it. Stop, think about that for a moment. Anything outside of faith is falling short of the glory of God. He said without faith, uh, Hebrews 11 and 3, without faith, it is impossible. It is impossible to please God. Matter of fact, like what Paul said in Romans, uh, Romans he said, he said uh, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. It's missing the mark. And so as a believer, as a child of God every day, now, your focus is staying and living in the fullness of the will of God, walking by faith, not by sight. Hmm. Some people today have forgotten what faith is. They're just living. <laughs> just living their lives. And uh, <laughs> what, what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and what lose his soul? What, what's valuable to you is where your focus is going to be and where your, where your, your approach is going to be towards your living. And so what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? He said, he said, if I seek to save my life in this world, he said, then I'm going to lose it. So that's a guarantee. That's, that's a guarantee. That, there's no question about it. This, the Bible is not about uh, either or, it, it, or if, it, if it's going to happen or it's not going to happen. No, it's a guarantee. This is, what, this is what Jesus has declared, that if I don't do, uh, he uh, put uh, Joshua 24 and 14 up there, please. Glory to God. Shout hallelujah. You know, if, if I don't live according to the word of the king, then I'm going to experience demise. Isaiah 1 and 19 said, if you be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. But notice what he said, if. The cross pointed in two separate directions, which represents righteousness, unrighteousness, holiness, unholiness, <laughs> save, unsaved. Jesus describes the parable, the sheep and the goats, wheat and the tares. He's given us all of these descriptions for a specific reason. Today, mankind has taken upon themselves that they're going to adjust the word of God to fit their own terms. <laughs> Look at somebody say, it doesn't work like that. Amen. It doesn't work like that. That's religion. Religion takes God's word, what God has established, what God has set in motion, and changes it to fit their own way of living. Hmm. That's why you have categories in scripture. You have the godly, you have the ungodly, and then you have the sinner. <laughs> Do you realize that? You have the godly, the ungodly, and the sinner. The ungodly, who is the ungodly? The ungodly who sees the standards, the, the truths of God's will, <laughs> but compromises what it says to fit their own agenda. Mm. Wow. And so, the, but the Bible says that if we add to or take away anything, there's a swift, fierce judgment that comes upon us. That's why what we see in the world of all of the, all of the, of the, 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 the foolishness, I call it, that's happening in the world, the church world right now, that we are not to be moved by these things. We should not even entertain those things because the Bible tells you already what's coming. It was going to happen. He said that what? Men are going to be what? Lovers of themselves. They're going to give heed to what? Doctrines of devils. Okay? So, so the word of God tells us. He, he already told us what's going to happen before it happened. So that you're not alarmed, distracted, or moved by you know, or be surprised by what's happening. You're too busy working on your faith. You're too busy working on your development in Christ. You're too busy working on your purpose and calling. You're too busy focusing on fulfilling God's perfect and divine will for you. Oh, shout hallelujah, somebody. Amen. And yes, Lord. I, and, and understand this because people say that there's a, permit, a permissive will. A permissive will. Can I help you this morning? Say this with me. I'm either in the will of God 
Oh, we can shout louder than that. Come on. Come on, shout. I'm either in the will of God or I'm out of it. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I'm either in the divine will of God, fulfilling his plan and call and purpose for me, or I'm not in it at all. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I like what uh, Peter said. He said, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And Satan's whole kingdom and agenda is to steer you off course of God's will. And that's why you got to put on the whole armor of God. That's why you're too busy to be distracted, because you, you're busy focusing on the armor of God. You're focusing on being equipped, the helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, loins girt about with truth, feet shod, the preparation of the gospel of peace, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, the shield of faith by which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. You're too busy. You're too busy doing what Paul instructed Timothy. He said, fight. He said Timothy, he said, fight the good fight of faith. You don't have time to give into trivial things or things that don't even matter. Why? Because you're busy. Focusing on the faith of God in your life. Oh, hallelujah. Can somebody give him praise this morning right now? Ooh, hallelujah. Too busy. Too busy seeking the Lord. That's what we got to get back to. Too busy in the presence of God. Too busy praying. Too busy walking with God to worry about and be concerned about what's happening, what somebody else is doing. <laughs> because at the end of the day, when you stand before God, he's going to ask you, not what the preacher did across town or across the other city. No, no. He, he's going to ask you, what did you do? <laughs> he's going to say, enter in, thou good and faithful servant. Or he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. <laughs> you see. And you have a lot of people right now, they know of the Lord. They know about God. And that's the difference from Israel and Moses. The Bible said that Israel knew the acts of God. They knew what he did. They knew his power, how he moved. They knew how he worked miracles. They, they, they knew God. They knew about him. But Moses knew his ways. And that's where you're called to live. I got to know the ways of God. That I don't just know that God is able, he, what he did last week, last year, or what he did for somebody else. But I know what God is able to do for me right now. Right in this moment. Right in this situation. Right in what I'm facing and going through right now. I know that he is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that. We ask or think according to the power that's worked within me. I know that if I call upon him, Jeremiah 33 and 3, I know if I call upon him, he's going to answer me. And he's going to show me great and mighty things that I don't even know about. I know that if, I, I know the Bible says that the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers. I know that he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, but I'll be with you always, even until the end of the world. Hallelujah. I know that he's with me right now. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, somebody shout glory to God. I know that if God be for us, who can be against us? Oh, praise his name. So I don't have to get in fear. I'm not wavering. So you're working on your faith so you don't waver. You're working on your faith, being established and solid in the word of God. That's what's missing today. We've lost our hunger and passion for the word. That's why our faith is dwindling. We lost our pursuit of the word of God and so our faith is not stable like it should be. And that's why Jesus gave the description of the measures of faith. He said there's a level of no faith, there's a level of little faith, and then there's a level of great faith. And he's called you to that place of great faith, that faith that Abraham had. The question is how did Abraham have a strong, great level of faith and he didn't even have a Bible. <laughs> he had the word of God, so he had the word of God. And God told him to meditate on his word day and night. Did you know that? That's the pattern. Where it comes from, Psalms 1. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doeth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. Oh, whatsoever he does, whatsoever he does, shall prosper and advance because he's delighting in the word of God and he's a doer of it. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. That's where it came from. He said, but he meditates in this law day and night. God gave Abraham something to meditate on in the daytime and in the nighttime to focus on so that he can be focused on the promise. 
That's where your focus should be right now on the promise of God. You're mission minded. Come on, shout, I got to be mission minded. Every day counts for what God is doing. He's called you to birth and fulfill the will of what he's called for you to do. My God. Ah, hallelujah. What he's called for you to do, there's no comparison. There's no comparison. The Bible said that they that do know their God shall be strong and do great exploits. That word exploits means bold and daring acts. And God's ready to use you on a greater level. See, now is not the time to decide whether I'm, I want to live right or not. Now, now, now is not the time. We're, we're, in the, we're in the hour. It's not the time now to try to figure out if I go serve God or I'm not going to serve God. Am I, am I going to church, going to stay in church, or, or I'm not going to stay in church? Now is not the time. Can you look at somebody and tell them, now is not the time. <laughs> now is not the time. Glory to God. The Bible said that judgment begins at the house of God. And if it begins at us, then where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? What, what, what hope do they have? There is none. Oh, there is none. The Bible said that the righteous scarcely barely make it in. My God. My God. What's going to happen to the sinner? What's going to happen to the ungodly? See, there's got to be a fear of God established within the heart of the believer. That the Bible says, holiness which without no man shall see the Lord. What does that mean? By myself. By myself. I'm going to walk with God. By myself. When I'm alone. Nobody else is around. Holiness which without no man shall see the Lord. I'm going to walk with God. My life is committed to him. I'm going to serve him. I'm going to pray without ceasing. I'm going to do what Jesus said. Pray. When you pray, enter into your closet. And the Father who sees you praying in secret, he's going to reward you in the open. That reward in the open is going to be the power of the Holy Spirit that's resting upon your life can somebody give him praise this morning oh my god oh hallelujah come on we can do better than that somebody give him a shout hallelujah glory to god come on shout today it's my turning point in the name of jesus it was corrupt wisdom that threw everything off and it's the right wisdom that's going to get you back on track you need the word of god you need to renew your mind. Paul says, Romans 12, he said, I beseech you, brother, in verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, that you present your bodies. He's giving you the pattern. He's telling you how to do this. There's no if or what. What do I do? He's, it's in the word of God. He's telling you what to do. He said that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That word reasonable service means that it is your spiritual act of worship. This is your due diligence. This is your calling now to give yourself to God every day. How do I do that? Two levels of authority and power that he has given to you to live by. And that's dunamis. Come on, shout dunamis. And exousia. And that word dunamis, is, it, it means the might of God. That word dunamis means the explosive power of God. That's why, Paul, that's why Paul said in Ephesians 6 and 10, he said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He's talking about the dunamis of God. He's talking about the dunamis. The dunamis of God comes through prayer. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. See, it, it shouldn't even be now a question whether I'm going to pray or not. See, that's when you're questioning your relationship with God. Do you have a relationship? That's why he said to them on the left, depart from me because I never knew you. Why? Because there was no relationship. He said, I never knew you. That word knew means there was no intimate acquaintance with you. There was no personal acquaintance with you. He said, I don't know you personally. You see, it's not enough to know of him. I have to personally know him. Oh, hallelujah. I'm talking about living in the presence of God. I'm not talking about just when you come to church to get in the presence. I'm talking about personally. When nobody else is around, where's your closet? Where, where, where you, where's your prayer room? Where, where, where do you pray at? See, that, that, place, that, that place where you have made, the place where you encounter God is the place where you begin to live. Oh, my God. Hallelujah, somebody. That's the place. That's the place where I live. That's no visitation. It's a habitation. God's not looking to visit you. He's looking for an habitation. Oh, hello, somebody. That's why the priests were instructed to carry the Ark of the Covenant on their shoulders by the staves that were put in the rings on the Ark of the Covenant. The staves made of a sacia tree of shittim wood, which was overlaid with gold, put in the ring so that the priests could carry it. God was symbolizing that, showing us that in the new covenant, this is what we're going to do. 
This is what we're going to do. In other words, know ye not that now through Jesus dying on the cross, shedding his blood, winning the hell, confronted the enemy. Come on now. He took back the keys of death, hell, and the grave. The Bible said that the veil in the temple split in two, forever perfecting the way into the holiest of all. Can somebody praise him? Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. He prepared that way for us now, that now whosoever believes in him, hallelujah, should not perish, but have eternal life and become now the carriers of the glory of the Lord. No, no, no. I'm not talking about carrying wood on your shoulder. That's what it symbolized in the old covenant. But today, he's living in you. You're living in him. He's abiding in you now. You're carriers. That's why Paul says, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And the spirit of the Lord lives and abides on the inside of you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to God that now I'm no longer citizens of Satan's kingdom. I'm no longer victims to Satan. I'm no, no, I'm no longer <laughs> under his circumstances anymore. I'm a born again believer. And when I became a born again believer, I was transferred out of the kingdom of darkness citizenship and brought into the kingdom of God's citizenship. That everything that I was overcome by and depressed by, frustrated by, the life of fear, come on, and the life of bondage, the life of addiction, that, that slave mentality and the life that I had when I was living in the kingdom of God, I have that no more. I am, a, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, new creation. Old things are passed away and all things are become new now. Ooh, I wish I had a church in here this morning. Woo! Ask somebody, are you ready? <laughs> glory, to, glory to God. Hallelujah. Can we just give him praise right now? Come on, can we give him praise right now? Somebody give him praise. Somebody give him praise. Come on, shout. This is my turning point. Come on, shout. Today is my turning point. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. So no longer bound. Uh, <laughs> look at this. Uh, Romans 8. Come on. Quick, quick, quick. Romans 8, verse 14, 15. Come on, quick, quick, quick. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Father. We worship you. Shall I never be the same? In Jesus' name. Come on, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. See, outside of Christ, I'm living, controlled by, overcome by the spirit of this world, whether I liked it or not, whether I accepted it or didn't accept it. I was influenced and driven by the spirit of this world system. And it goes deeper than that, because born-again, spirit-filled believers still can be driven by, influenced by the spirit of this world. Mm. Oh, my God. How is that so... The, the lack of the word of God abiding within you. The Bible says Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Wow. That's why he says, be ye transformed, Paul said, by the renewing of your mind. He said, be not conformed to this world anymore. Don't think like, don't pattern your life like the world system anymore. But he says be transformed by the renewing. Metamorphosis has to take place. Can somebody say hallelujah? The same process that a caterpillar goes through from turning it to, from a caterpillar to a butterfly. He goes through a metamorphosis. Wow. It's a total change. Have you ever heard somebody say the things I used to do, I don't do no more. <laughs> the things I used to say, I don't say anymore. Places I used to go, I don't go there anymore. There's been a change. There's been a transformation. It's not by might nor by power, but it's by the spirit of the Lord who's equipping you and strengthening you to live the righteous life. Can we give God a shout hallelujah? Ooh, my God. He says, you've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Wow. Ephesians 
chapter 2. Come on. Let's follow the Holy Ghost. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. Oh, praise you, Father. Oh, worship you, Father. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Verse 2. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. That's where the ungodly is right now. That's where the, that's where the sinner is living. That's where we all live before we got born again. He says, to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of who? Disobedience. I hear I hear so strong uh, hold your place right here we're going to come right back Isaiah 1 and 19 Whew. oh thank you Father can somebody shout hallelujah so I got to renew my mind in the word nothing just happens because you're sick and tired of your situation because you're just frustrated and tired of everything that's happening and going on nothing just happens the way out is the word your way out there's got to be a transformation, a renewing of the mind, and you got to apply the word of God. What did Jesus do when the enemy tempted him? He set the tone and the pattern for us in the word of God. What, what did Jesus do? He declared the word of God. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The enemy came back again, took him to the porch of the temple, and quoted, eyes, quoted Psalm 91 to him. See, Satan knows the logos. Mm. That's why you need the truth of God abiding in you, which is called the rhema word, which comes through meditation. Oh, praise his name, somebody. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Father. Shout, Lord, give me the rhema. In the name of Jesus. He took him to a high mountain, showed him the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. He said, if you bow down and worship me, I will give you all of these. Jesus said, it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and only him shalt thou serve. What did he declare each time? The word of God. What did he do each time? He released kingdom authority. What are you supposed to do? When the enemy attacks your mind, attacks your life, See, that's why Paul said to Timothy, 2 Timothy 2 and 15. He says, study, come on, to show yourself approved in the sight of God, a workman, need of not to be ashamed, rightly dividing, come on, rightly dividing the word of truth. I'm supposed to be able to apply the word to every situation. Look at somebody tell them, there's a word for your situation. In Jesus' name, glory to God. Hallelujah. Can you sound hallelujah? Come on, we're closing. We're, we're, getting ready, we're getting ready to close. Look at this. He says, Isaiah 1 and 17, he says, Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now. Let us reason together, saith the Lord. The word reason says, means, God says, come, let's argue over this. Let's argue over this. In other words, he was telling them that your way and your decisions of what you're doing to live your life, let's see the outcome of yours versus the outcome of mine. <laughs> Whoo, hallelujah, somebody. So he says, he says, let's reason together about this. Though your sins be as scarlet. He says, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Here it is. If you be, come on, if you be willing and obedient. He said, this is a guarantee. This is an if. Mm -mm. This is a guarantee. This is a promise. He says, if you be willing and obedient, 
you shall eat the good of the land. Verse 20. Come on. Verse 20. Look at this. He says, but if you refuse and rebel, he says, you are going to be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord have spoken it. Wow. Many people look up, look at what they are walking away from to serve God. Many people are looking at what they have to give up to serve God. Listen, nothing in this world is worth holding on to to lose the very thing that matters the most, and that's you. That's your soul, your heart, your life. What is it to live and enjoy everything that I desire to be and do? <laughs> Thinking I have it made. There was a rich man in the Bible who got so wealthy, he said, man, what am I going to do now? I'm about to retire. I tell you what, I'm going to build bigger barns, put all my goods and fruit in these barns. I'm going to tell myself, self, <laughs> sit back, take ease, party, live it up, have it good for the rest of your life. And the Bible says that the Lord came to him that night and said, you fool, this night your soul is required of you. Oh, my God. He said, today is the day that you must give an account for what you did here. Wow. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Wow. This is not a decision. This is a commitment. Lord, I will commit to live for you and to serve you. James 1 and 22, I hear. He says, but be not hearers of the word only, but doers. <laughs> Jesus gave a parable. He says, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I'll show you to whom he's like. He's just like a man that built his house upon a rock. Wind, rain, flood came, beat against it. Could not fall. Could not shake it. Luke's account says, because... It was established on a rock. And that rock is the word of God. And every area of your life, you're called to build on the word. Hallelujah, somebody. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but not one jot of my word, God says, will pass away. The word of the Lord endures forever. So when you're going through, rest in the word. So when sickness arises, declare the word. See, when you come into situations, now is not the time to try to run, trying to find your Bible to see what it says. That's why Paul says part of the armor around the feet is the what? Come on. Feet. Shot. What did he say? Preparation of the gospel of peace. See, every day you're supposed to be preparing for what the enemy is trying to do and trying to come against your life. Demons don't rest. The kingdom of darkness, there's no rest. They're cursed beings. They don't sleep. They're constantly strategizing and working 24-7 to attack to bring destruction to your personal life, to your family, to your marriage. Oh, come on, shout, the devil is alive. That's why, that's why Paul says, put on the whole armor of God in Jesus' name. Can we worship him this morning right now? Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Come, give me some. Worship music. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We bless you, Father. Can we just worship him right now? Thank you, Father. I've got to make a commitment. It's a commitment. I will renew my mind in the word. I will not be overcome. 
I will not be distracted by the enemy no more. I will not be defeated, but I will meditate in this law. Abraham had the stars of the sky. God said, if you can number the stars, you can tell how the seed is going to be that's going to come out of you. In the daytime, he had the dust of the earth. He said, if you can number the dust of the ground, that's how the seed is going to be that's coming out of you. Oh, hallelujah. He gave him something. He gave Abraham something to meditate on day and night. And every time he saw the dust of the ground, he was reminded that's how the seed is going to be. Every time he saw the stars in the sky, that's how the seed is going to be. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father. I hear the Holy Ghost right now. God's calling for a greater commitment from some of you this morning. I'm just going to speak what I see and what I hear. It's the heart of God. There's another level that God has for you. There's another level where you are walking in such of the manifestation of the glory of God and birthing and fulfilling what God's called for you to do. And I hear the Holy Spirit saying it's a greater commitment of the heart. First commandment, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. He said, thou shalt not have any other God before him. If I'm not serving God, who is your God? What is your God? The greatest idol that the enemy has deceived many into serving is S-E-L-F, self. Self. I want what pleases me what I want to do Jesus said if any man wish to follow up after him let him first deny himself take up his cross and follow him so there's got to be a denying of Myself. One definition says, do not even mention the existence of who you were anymore. That life is over. New creation. New creature. Your cross. He said, take up your cross and follow him. He's not talking about taking a wooden cross and travel all over the world. He's talking about you bearing the burden every single day self-denial that's your cross your cross is denying self denying you denying the old way of living the old thoughts the old life that's the cross and until we bear that cross we cannot properly follow Jesus God has so much more for you than what you're experiencing right now he said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you an expected end, greatness in your final outcome. Some of you, there's books in you, there's schools in you, there's businesses inside of you. Some of you have dreams of fulfilling and birthing businesses and schools, and different things. Whew. I see a travel business. Some of you... It's been dormant. See, you want to know why Jesus said you need not worry about what you're going to eat, drink, or put on? Because your kingdom now. We don't seek those things. We, watch this, our jobs is our ministry. Your job is not your source. That's where the believer makes the mistake. 
The day that I understood the kingdom operation and began to obey God, multiple streams of income began to flow. Because Jesus said, oh my God, Luke 19 and 13. He said to occupy till he comes. And the word occupy means to birth his will, go do business, get involved in buying and selling in trade. Open businesses. Become entrepreneurs. See, that's his kingdom. The word kingdom means God's royalty. That's who you are now. It means God's rulership. That's who you are now. It means God's realm of existence, freedom in his presence. That's where you live now. It means reign, the power of reigning as a king. That's why he said that Jesus is the king of kings. He's the Lord of Lord. See, he, he died to bring you back to your right place. What Adam lost, I wish I had time this morning. But we have to renew our minds. The greatest need for man is to renew their minds. Hallelujah. And I understand what God's will is for my life. I never, my life will never be subject to the necessities and the things of this world. He said the Gentiles seek all these things. He said, but the Father already knows what you have needed. The blessing is upon your life. He said in Deuteronomy 28 that these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. The Bible says daily he loads you with benefits. When you woke up this morning, benefits released upon your life. Oh, hallelujah. Number one, God's asked for a greater commitment. Those of you who know who you are. There's nothing to be embarrassed of, nothing to be ashamed of. This is the hospital. This is the place of healing. This is the place of miracles. This is the place of restoration. This is the place of mending of broken hearts. But this is the first thing I hear. Pastor, pray for me. I want a closer walk with God. With every head bowed, every eye closed in this place right now. I don't want a visitation. I want a habitation. I want to fulfill God's plan and agenda and will for my life. I want to submit my whole heart to Him. If that's you this morning, just lift that hand. We're going to pray for you. I'm not going to call you down here. I'm just going to pray for you right where you are. Nothing to be embarrassed of, nothing to be ashamed of. Just lift that hand if that's you this morning. Say, Pastor, pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. I want to abide in the Word of God. Hadn't been in the Word like I should have been. Hadn't been renewing my mind. Been overcome. Been living defeated. But I want to walk in my freedom today. My turning point is now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If there's one here this morning, you say, Pastor, I'm not born again. I'm not saved. If Jesus was to come back right now, I would not be going to heaven. There's one. If Jesus was to come back right now, hell would be my home. Hell was not created and prepared for you. It was prepared for Satan and all those cursed angels driven out of heaven but those who refuse to serve God those who reject God those who oppose his will end up in that place of torment in that place where there's no return is there one this morning just lift that hand high we're going to pray for you we're going to pray for you pastor today I want Jesus to be my Lord, to be my Lord and Savior. I want to be saved today in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. 
We thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. A few more seconds. Is there one? In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, this morning. Glorify your name. Glorify your name. If Jesus came right now, are you ready? Is your heart ready? Are you ready? To go with him. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We give you glory and honor. We give you glory and honor. Can we just worship the Lord right now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. 